All right, today's video is uh, on section 9.1. We're going to be talking about sequences and a few other topics that go with sequences. So the first thing that we're going to talk about, which uh, hopefully you've seen in algebra, but if you haven't, it's not that difficult of a topic. We're going to talk about factorials. So let's take a look at a couple of examples. Let's say we have 5. And yes, I'm writing an exclamation point, but this is really factorial. So we say 5 factorial. And the way that this is defined is we take 5 and we multiply it by every whole number less than it down to 1. So 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. We multiply that all out and we get 120. So in a similar fashion, if we did 6 factorial, that would be 6 times 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. And multiplying that all out, we would get 720. So what if we had n factorial? So this is a little abstract, and it gets a little bit more difficult. So we're going to take n, and we're going to multiply it by every number that's less than n. So 1 less than n, we subtract 1 from that, would be n minus 1. 1 less than n minus 1, subtract 1 again, so n minus 1 minus 1 would be n minus 2. Let's do one more. 1 less than n minus 2, that would be n minus 2 minus 1, so that would be n minus 3. And then we would continue this all the way down until we got to 3, and then 2, and then 1. So depending on our value for n would depend on you know, where we would start. We're always going to end at 1. How about if I had something like n plus 2 factorial? All right, we're going to start with the number, so that's n, n plus 2. Now we need to subtract 1 from this, so n plus 2 minus 1 would be n plus 1. Then we're going to subtract 1 from that again, n plus 1 minus 1, so that would be n. Let's do one more. n, subtract 1 from that, so that would be n minus 1. And we would continue until we get down to 3 times 2 times 1. All right, so let's take a look at a few uh, problems that use factorials. So we're going to simplify each. So let's say we had 3 factorial divided by 7 factorial. So 3 factorial is 3 times 2 times 1. And 7 factorial is 7 times 6 times 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. Since we have all multiplication, we can cancel some things in the numerator with some things in the denominator. So this 3, 2, 1 in the numerator is going to cancel with that 3 times 2 times 1 down there. We we'll always have to be left with something, so there's a 1 over here. In the uh, denominator, we're left with 7 times 6 times 5 times 4. Go ahead and simplify, and we get 1 over 840. So let's take a look at this a little bit differently. So I'm going to have 3 factorial over 7 factorial. So this is going to be 3 factorial over 7 times 6 times 5 times 4. And then I'm going to multiply 3 times 2 times 1, which really is just 3 factorial. So we could do it this way, save us a little bit of writing, and these 3 factorials will cancel out. Again, we'll just have 1, and you would get the same answer, 1 over 840. So this way is going to be a little bit quicker. If it's not making sense to you, go ahead and do it this way for now until uh, it's making sense to you. But I'm going to go ahead and do it this way for the examples. It's going to save us a lot of time and space. So next example. We've got 36 factorial over 34 factorial. And at any time during the notes, if you feel like you want to pause it and try it on your own, feel free. So I've got 36 factorial on the top. So I'm going to start with my larger factorial. So I've got 36 times 35 
times 34 times all the numbers less than it down to 1, so that would be 34 factorial. And then in the denominator, I already have 34 factorial, so I can see that these 34 factorials will cancel out. All I have to do is multiply 36 times 35 to get 1,260. All right, moving on to the next example. Let's say we have 5 factorial times 3 factorial over 4 factorial. So there really are a bunch of different ways you can do this. I'm going to take my 5 factorial and make it 5 times 4 factorial, because that's going to be 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. And then I'm going to write out my 3 factorial. That's 3 times 2 times 1. And then in the denominator, I have 4 factorial. So the 4 factorials are going to cancel out. I have 5 times 3 times 2 times 1, which gives me 30. So that was three examples using numbers. Let's uh, take a look at what this would look like with variables. So let's say I had n plus 3 factorial divided by n factorial. In the last problem uh, example, we talked about starting with the largest number first. So if we look at these two, which one's going to be larger, n plus 3 or n factorial? So n plus 3 is um, going to be a larger number, so I'm going to start simplifying that first. So I'm going to have n plus 3. Now I have to subtract 1 from this, so n plus 3 minus 1 is going to be n plus 2. And then n plus 2 minus 1 is n plus 1. And then n plus 1 minus 1 is going to be times n. And then I'm going to keep multiplying this until I get all the way down to 1, so that essentially is n factorial. And then in the denominator, I also have n factorial. So these are going to cancel each other out, and my final answer just becomes n plus one, 3 times n plus 2 times n plus 1. And uh, for our purposes, we don't need to f uh, expand this or FOIL it out. All right, one more example before we moved on. Let's say we have n minus 1 factorial over n plus 1 factorial. Again, if you'd like to pause and try this on your own and then check, feel free. So, uh, which is going to be larger, n minus 1 factorial or n plus 1 factorial? Well, this time it's going to be the denominator, so I'm going to start with that. So I'm going to have n plus 1, subtract 1 from this, so I have n plus 1 minus 1, so that's times n. Subtract 1 from that, so that's going to be n minus 1. Now I see it's matching up with the top, so this is really n minus 1 times everything down to 3 times 2 times 1, so that's n factorial. And then in the numerator, I have n minus 1 factorial. So these are going to cancel. I'm left with a 1 in the numerator. And I have 1 over n plus 1 times n for your final answer. All right, let's switch gears a little bit and move on to another type of example. So for these, we're going to find the first five terms of each sequence. So for part A, I'm given a sequence that's generated by a sub n is equal to 2n plus 1. So something you're going to want to get used to is using um, different variables. A lot of times we would just say f of x equals 2x plus 1 back in algebra. But now a sub n stands for a generic term in our sequence. And the, each of the terms is generated by plugging in the numbers 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, etc. into this expression. So if I wanted to find the first term, a sub 1, I would simply substitute in 1 to the expression. So that would be 2 times 1 plus 1, which would give us 3. If I want to find the second term, a sub 2, I would simply plug in 2. So it's 2 times 2 plus 1, so that would give us 5. Third term, a sub 3, would be 2 times 3 plus 1, or 7. And the fourth term is 2 times 4 plus 1, which is 9. And if you haven't found the pattern yet, we're looking at uh, odd numbers starting with 3. 
So we've got 2 times 5 plus 1, which is 11. So you see we're increasing by 2 each time. Um, this is actually a special type of sequence. This sequence here is called an arithmetic sequence. Okay, we're going, we're adding the same amount each time. So plus two, plus two, plus two, plus two. So just a little preview of things to come. And I know it's spelled arithmetic, but in this uh, context, we say arithmetic. All right, let me go ahead and uh, scoot that up a little bit so you can finish copying down the rest if you can see it. All right, so we have two more examples. Here's example B. Again, we're going to find the first five terms. And we've got A sub n is equal to 2 raised to the n. So um, here's our expression that's going to generate each of the terms. So we want the first uh, five terms. So I have A sub 1 a sub 2, a sub 3, a sub 4, and a sub 5. Right. So a sub 1, we're going to plug 1 in. So 2 to the first is just 2. 2 to the second is 4. 2 to the third, 2 times 2 times 2 is 8. 2 to the fourth, 16. And 2 to the fifth, which is 32. So if you notice in this sequence to go from one term to the next, what are we going to what are we going to do? Well, we're multiplying by 2. So 2 times 2 is 4. 4 times 2 is 8. 8 times 2 is 16. 16 times 2 is 32. This is another type of special sequence. This is called a geometric sequence. So if we're adding the same thing each time to get the next term, it's called an arithmetic. If we're multiplying by the same thing each time, like this one, it's called geometric. All right, one more example. Let's say we have a sub n is equal to n squared plus 1. So go ahead and pause the video. I'm going to fill in the answers while you're paused. So when you come back, it's going to be the completed problem. You won't see me work through it. All right, so here's uh, the work for example C. Hopefully you got 2, 5, 10, 17, and 26. And if you're trying to look for a pattern, there really isn't any. This goes up by 3, this goes up by 5, this goes up by 7, this goes up by 9. So, I mean, there is a pattern that it goes up, but it's not adding the same thing each time or multiplying the same thing each time to get the next term. So this doesn't really have a special name like the arithmetic and the geometric. So if you have any questions, uh, make sure you write them down in your notes and ask them in class tomorrow. And uh, we'll uh, see you in class.